Hey everybody. Uh, in lieu of a new boss or hero coming out, right now we're going to talk about the most busted hero, most broken hero in the game. Who could it be? I don't have the leper unlocked, but uh, spoiler, it's not the leper. Not at all, actually. Probably, yeah. So let me tell you my top three candidates. I kind of went back and forth on the third. It's Hellion. <laughs> That's not the Hellion. It's Man at Arms, Hellion, and I go back and forth between the Plague Doctor and the Runaway. Um, just because they're so good at healing and stuff is like real reason why. I think the Plague Doctor is going to be my official third, just because there's so many ways to heal, clear bodies, but the Runaway is really friggin' good. So, But I do think the Plague Doctor has just a little more versatility and a uh, party used overall. Now, out of those three, who do I think is just the most absurd? From an all-around game perspective, what you have to do in the game of Darkest Dungeon 2 in this cur current iteration is the Man at Arms. He's just so incredibly busted right now, um, especially with the fact that you can pick the skills you want. Um, like, it's just everything, the only path that may not be good is Bulwark. I mean, 10% stun skill. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, Bulwark's really the only one that's like, I mean, it's eh. It's not bad. Sergeant, <clears throat> it's a good team skill. Vanguard, good output damage skill. Don't really care about the resistances if you have a Plague Doctor or the, actually, the Minus Bleed Resist is very good for the Runaway. So, honestly, the drawback to Vanguard is almost a positive if paired with the Runaway. So really Vanguard's just 20% more HP, 50% more damage, 25% more repose. I mean, it's almost, there's almost no reason not to have him. Sorry, just pick my. So this is usually part I go with. And the reason why the Hellion's not as strong is because the Man of Arms will go to his skills. And we'll just uncheck them all. Oh, they all, they all. So his crush is actually, and if I hold this down, I guess I'll have to hold it down. So it goes six to eight, which is really good. Obviously, if you do Vanguard, it's what, 50%? So this goes to eight to 12 then, correct? Which is really good damage, because if you look at the Hellion, six to 10, right? Now, if you put on Ravager with her, that does, what is it? Is it 25% now? It's only 25% damage in row one, actually. So you're almost... That's actually 8 to 13. So yeah, like I said, can only hit the first two rows. The Mana Arms Crush with um, his skill on does 50% more damage on Crush skill. And you can hit the third position. Therefore, you can heal yourself. You can do the same amount of damage, hit the third position. So it's a lot better damage versatility there. Um, Rampart, he can obviously daze, uh, do a possible stun. The stun's very nice. Very few characters have a good stun. Unshuffles them. The Defender is really good for certain bosses, and um, especially the Exemplar, since you have to do the Exemplar. Defender is just beyond useful for that. We go to Bolster. Bolster can remove, obviously, vulnerabilities. They can remove the weakenings. They remove two stress on that person and themselves, so that can be a four stress swing, get a 75% stress. I mean, the Man at Arms is truly busted. I mean, you can freaking stun. Oh, that's hold the line. I was going to say, I don't remember that being on repost. My bad. But there's another stun chance. So he's got two abilities that could stun. Uh, minus five speed. You remove a crit token, crit token and repost. So if that's upgraded, um, you can make some of the cultist fights really easy. You can make the exemplar a little easier. Minus five speed on the cultist as well. We'll probably guarantee if you get to go first. So they're not using their tokens. So Bellow's extremely good. Hits everybody. Could use a lot of dodge tokens. Very good. I mean, repost is repost and 50% damage reduction. Very good. Command is probably one of his weakest abilities, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, it kind of pairs with the Leper, but he does so much damage, so versatility would be a waste. Uh, Stand Fast is very good for the Obsession boss. Other bosses, eh, I mean, I guess you can get rid of the combo token on yourself, but it's maybe not bad with an Encore, and also he does something, but it's very situational. But it's a good skill. I mean, you get 75%. Uh, protection tokens on and on and on so that's really good courageous abandoned I've really never used it um, so I'm not gonna speak too much about it I mean it's potential to do some decent damage uh, you do get to remove obviously it's 
I mean, you could do some decent damage with it, you guess. Them. So it, it could be a weird turnaround thing, but for the most part, I wouldn't do that. And then we have strategic withdrawal. Something else I don't really do. Um, the 30... It, it's obviously a good death door thing, but honestly, I don't... Don't really plan to do this when I'm near death door. I mean, I guess it would adds an... I mean, it's it's kind of useless, to be honest. Like, Maybe it's a point-blank combo thing. I'm not sure. I just don't see it. So his only two worst skills are Courageous Abandon and Strategic Withdrawal. The other nine are really friggin good and I've used them all to decent success. The only reason why command's not that good is just like and it's not even terrible to be honest if you really need someone like a uh, possibly a highwayman or a hellion to be activated. Sorry just check my time here. Uh, to be activated so command's still not even that bad. Um, I thought about the plague doctor but the plague doctor can be a little squishy. Um, the Alchemist Hero Path is pretty darn good, it's just that minus 20% HP is pretty problematic. Um, but honestly, Noxious Blast is good, Blinding Gas is very good, Incision with Surgeon is actually pretty darn good. Uh, Battlefield Medicine is amazing, Ounce of Prevention is just... I... no. Uh, ever since they got rid of the Stress Heal on it, I mean, I guess it's not bad against the Librarian, but no. Plague Grenades are very good. Emboldening Vapors, I heard people say they like that with the, uh, was the Alchemist, I just didn't enjoy it that much. Disorienting Blast is okay. It's it's very situational for that stun. Without the stun, I wouldn't bother using it. Um, indiscriminate Science is very good, you can essentially boost people up to full HP if they're below 50%. Cause of Death, extremely situational, I've seen it used to just like... Amazing cheese levels, obviously. Okay. Other than that, for bosses with massive amounts of HP, you just want to drop in one turn. It's very boss, like end game boss scenario. Perfectly fine. Magnesium rains amazing. Three DOT across everybody. It's um, a <clears throat> clears the corpses. It gets rid of the evasion tokens. All around an amazing ability. Does not activate repost. The Hellion is probably one of the better damage dealers, but definitely not one of the most broken people in the game. Um, well, Wicked Hack is good, but not like game breaking. Uh, since they now made the upgrade version two turns cooldown, I mean, still 10 to 18 with 15 percent chance with Ravager, you know, it goes up pretty high. But when Ravager was what was it, 50 percent first row, this was pretty busted because it went from it went 14 to 27. That was pretty much always a guaranteed one shot. Now it's two-thirds, or if it's a weaker enemy, it's probably one shot. It's not as busted as it used to be. Wild Hack's a lot better than it used to be. 50% damage is also pretty good if you have a combo for that. Iron Swan's not bad. 6 out of 10 auto, auto marks the target. You can kind of pair well to a few people's synergy. Um, Barbaric Yawp. I haven't really ever done that that much. Um, it's definitely utility. I mean, remove the stealth. Minus less damage possible stun, but it does give you exhausted, which I don't think's worth for a ability that doesn't have a guarantee. Like it's just not a good intro skill. If it bleeds, um, it's not very good to be honest. I don't think it's very good. If you do Ravager, I think it's useless. So it's eh. Uh, toe to toe is amazing once you get it upgraded. Almost a necessity for uh, Howling's End to that. Adrenaline Rush is very good. Gain 20% HP on the attack is essentially what you want to use it for. Um, so that's very good. Bleed Out, I don't really use it. I mean, it is 6, but it does only 6 to 9. So I'm trying to think of a scenario where taking the 6 bleed damage for an exhaustion, hitting 1 for 1, is better than doing... The only thing I think of is like if you Howling's End, and then you go into a bleed out where you don't really need damage because most of your damage is going to come from the bleed or if maybe you want to synergize it with what's that called cause of death yeah that's something you know because you because you could do i mean that wouldn't be bad you howling send one person you bleed out the next person you cause a death for 18 immediate damage so actually that's not a terrible combo but once again it has to be used in a combo probably blood loss is actually pretty good if you want to do like a um Let's just say you like Howling's End into an Encore to get rid of that, and someone did like if you got a, a Highway Man to do Wicked Slice, you could pop off 30% more damage against a target that's bleeding. 
you just got to Howling Sand immediately, or, you know, there's a couple ways that could work out. Breakthrough, I think, is one of the worst abilities in the game still, because it exhausts Remove Perdea. I don't know, I still think it's terrible. Um, it's not bad. I mean, heal, it's more for yourself. Like I said, it's a really good skill. Um, I often don't put it on, though, because I don't want to put a time into it. But, I mean, it is a very good save-your-butt skill. It's just usually when I get that low, um, I like to pop Adrenaline Rush instead. It gives me the same amount of HP, future heals. It removes, it removes the exhaustion, does not gain one, and also removes any DOTs that may be on me. And I can also give myself all death source by just hitting next time. It's very good. And then obviously Howling's End is very, very good. So I think Man at Arms takes the cake. Uh, I think he just literally works in almost any party you want to have. I mean, a very common setup with Man at Arms is, um, can easily be that. I just like to keep this on occasion for the um, when your party does get shuffled. Or if you want to daze someone to like heal or whatever. If you don't do that, I mean, you could easily do a bellow. I don't, like I said, I think these other skills are very situational. You don't really want to do them unless you have a uh, specific idea in mind. I do like the Jester a lot. But, um, a little squishy. And kind of has to be in the third row. The Man at Arms really could bounce between one and two very well. Three if you have a very specific idea for him, but... I think he excels in position two. And once again, the Plague Doctor, same thing. Positions three to four. A little squishy. Um, I've lost a few Plague Doctors due to their low HP. Um, he can guard, remove stress, technically heal himself if his team allows him. So he's got heals, stress, pretty good, pretty good attack row diversity, can debuff your enemy, protect your people, cause himself to be a tank. It, it's just he's all around probably the most broken character. They've only made him better since the game started, I think. He used to be okay, he was still very strong, but now he's probably one of the strongest characters in the game. So that is, um, that is very exciting. And actually, I'm gonna keep... I'm doing the, uh, I am actually gonna keep this party, because I'm doing... Oh, what's that nuts called? I'm doing the ceiling sigh with this party. Yeah, I'm doing ceiling size. So we're gonna do Iron Swan, Grape Shot, into Repost, into Chronic Slice Off. Yes, Harvest. Yeah, we're gonna do Slice Off. It lost because of vulnerability. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think the most busted um, person is. Like I said, I believe it is the Man at Arms, just because of literally the whole video of what I just talked about. All right, thanks for watching.